My custom water blocks from Swift Tech are here, but perhaps more importantly, my email from ASUS giving me the guidance that I need to overclock the 56 core system is also here. So what do we stand to gain? According to ASUS's guidance, anywhere from three to 9% performance. And what do we stand to lose? $20,000 in CPUs, $750 in motherboards, and about five grand worth of RAM. So what are we waiting for? Anchor's new PowerWave 7.5 pad and stand both offer faster wireless charging, easy alignment for your device, and the pad is coated with an anti-slip material. Check them out on Amazon through the links below. So one of the most exciting things about this board to me, other than the hilariously broken uh, web page for it with this placeholder text in it, is the fact that ASUS advertises it as overclocking capable. So this is the exact same platform that we had set up from our holy shit. So we've got a system that seems to be locked up. And we're back, everything seems to be working fine. So 56 processing cores and completely inadequate cooling. So we're getting some baseline readings here. So we're sitting at around 6,700 in Cinebench. Let's go ahead and restart it and key in what ASUS figures is gonna give us a 3% overclock and then we're gonna go from there. So we go into AI overclock tuner, set that to manual. Change this to 103. Spread spectrum gets disabled. Xeon turbocharger gets enabled. And then, ba bow that's not good. Oh, that's not good at all. Well, that didn't work. Just gonna fire them over a quick email saying thank you for the instructions. By the way, they were shit. This is one of the challenges with overclocking by base clock rather than by adjusting the multiplier. When you adjust the base clock, you actually throw a bunch of other system frequencies out of whack, including PCI Express. And what can happen is if you go too far out of spec, you can make it so that certain devices won't be detected anymore. I've never heard of 1% out of spec causing a storage controller to stop showing up, but our SATA drive is not showing up at 101 base clock. I hope it didn't brick the drive. Yeah, see, there's no, there's no drive boot options here. Okay, we're gonna go back to 100 and see if this shows up again. There, it's back, see? ATA device, so that's a good sign. You know, you could get absolutely like shredded if like every time you had to wait around for a server board to post, you're just like, yeah, I'm gonna do some crunches. Ah, ah, ah. That seems like a lot of work though. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna switch over to an M.2 NVMe SSD because we know our video card was still working. So, so some stuff still might work. Okay, this is good. So our 960 Pro is here. Let's go ahead and save our changes and see if at 101 we can boot up into Windows. Nice. Okay, check this out, this is good. 101 megahertz, 7594. Wait, is that much higher? Oh, looks like just some of the things we've tuned are even without any base clock overclocking, forcing the processor to run at a higher turbo frequency. Let's see if we can push for more. So this is it, the turbo ratio lock. This right here is sort of similar to the uh, multi-core optimization that caused that whole scandal during the Coffee Lake launch. So it was effectively causing higher power consumption, but higher performance, overclocking the processors out of the box. Now that it's not enabled by default, I don't think there's any scandal there, but that's why we got so much more performance. It was taking the expected turbo for all cores active and just setting it to like a higher turbo that was for not all the cores being active. With that said, according to ASUS's guidance, we should expect more than 1% on top of that. So we're trying 3%. What? The reset button stopped working. I, 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 I didn't even touch it there. I'm just, I don't know if this is a good sign yet. It's doing this thing where it like keeps trying and it makes it a little bit further every time but then it keeps just resetting itself this ram is already running at 
like the balls to the wall speed for this platform, 2600. Maybe we dial that back and see if maybe trying to not run the memory out of spec will help us get booted up at 103. And I wouldn't have thought it possible, but I made it worse. <laughs> Postcode zero. I got an email from ASUS, different contact this time, Jacqueline, who suggested I try her exact configuration, but we're gonna need to make a couple of changes. First of all, no SATA drive, that's gotta go. Second of all, I've gotta rip out most of the RAM. And she also suggested that I try with the onboard graphics. Wow, these are hot. Cut my computer into pieces. It is a piece of shit. Oh, come on. The only thing worse than slow posting server boards is when slow posting server boards post and then reset themselves as part of like a, I don't know if this is a memory training exercise or something, I don't know what it's doing. Did it just turn off again? So now from a second source, yeah, no problem. All I did was dial in these settings and bippity boppity. Well, well, now I'm in an even worse position. Overclocking failed and I have no keyboard detected. Yes, I have another idea. We're gonna give it more voltage. And we're straight to zero, zero. So I've got a couple more ideas. Stop it. There are a few other things here that maybe we could look at. Stop. We could turn on load line calibration. Stop. Extreme phase control. Stop it. A3 again. Get some help. It's time for a Hail Mary. To be clear, I don't think this is thermals related, but let's water cool this thing. Let's see what happens. Is this brand new? Nope. And whoever put it back didn't put the hardware back with it. Thank you, guys. Wow. This was left over from whole room water cooling. Oh. Gross. To be clear, the rust isn't from the pump itself. These don't, these don't rust. The worst part is I know everything I'm doing right now is almost definitely for no, okay, come on. Okay. Ouch. Ah. Cut myself in the scissors. Cut my life into pieces. And you know what? If we're gonna go full Hail Mary, let's just put all the RAM back in. This is an advanced water cooling technique. This is known as the, uh, the pump and fill. Look at this mess. I better get some good results out of it. Okay. CPUs are still detected. All the RAM is still detected. The bad news is on first boot, we get an overclocking failed message. So that's flipping. Wow, those are much better CPU temps, 30 and 36. So we have dropped just about 30 degrees, about 25 degrees off of our CPUs. We're going full ham on the CPU voltage. Let's hit it. Hey, 103. It might've been the auto voltage not going high enough the whole time. Holy shit, let's hit it with a load. We're back to the same score we got before we just tuned those bio settings and ran it at 101. Okay. Let's try restoring our defaults and keying everything in manually again. Okay, here we go. We're at 3.3 gigahertz this time. 7596, okay. Even if we could get another 4%, we wouldn't be able to crack 8,000, but I mean, we have to try. I mean, it's funny, like we preach the importance of cooling all the time around here, but I've never seen it have this profound an impact. straight to postcode zero, zero. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have changed so many things at once. So without tooling around with any of that other stuff this time, let's go for 105 again. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, and zero, zero. All right. You can overclock a workstation or a server, but you're gonna affect your system in ways that you might not otherwise foresee, like making it so your SATA SSD doesn't show up. And the performance gains are probably fairly negligible. My recommendation based on the performance we were able to achieve is just 
go with some kind of like turbo manipulation like Asus's turbo locking thing and if that's stable, call it a day. See, that's, that's F right there. Rip, rip the dream. New from Mastrop is a new keyboard modeled after the super successful K-Type. It's fully programmable with RGB lighting and QMK firmware, which makes it much easier to program and gives you more control. At checkout, you can choose between Cherry MX, Kaiwa, and Halo switches, which will affect the pricing depending on your choice. And there are a few first production perks that you get if you join this drop now, including a free novelty keycap, behind the scenes live Q&A with the designer, and 10 bucks free for your next keycap set. So pick it up today on Mass Drop for a limited time through the link below. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.